section 8.2, which is about integration by parts. So we're going to start by recalling the product rule. Recall the product rule. It says that the derivative of f of x times g of x would be f of x g prime of x plus g of x times f prime of x. So our goal in this section, what we want to know is we want to know how to integrate a product. Well, using the product rule, we know that the antiderivative of f of x g prime of x plus g of x f prime of x is the product f of x times g of x. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this right hand side now and we're going to split this up into two separate integrals. So the integral of f of x times g prime plus the integral of g of x times f prime x equals f of x times g of x. And now what we're going to do is we're going to isolate this uh, first term on the left. So I'm going to move this other integral over to the right hand side. Okay. So doing that, we're going to get the integral of f of x g prime of x is f of x times g of x minus the integral of g of x f prime x dx. So this formula right here tells us how to integrate a product. Okay. So this formula right here is what's called integration by parts. This is the formula for integration by parts. And what it does is it helps us integrate a product. But the one drawback to this formula is that it's kind of complicated looking. So what I'll say is that this formula is difficult to remember. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a substitution. I'm going to replace f of x by u. So then du would be f prime x dx. And I'm going to replace g of x by v. So dv would be g prime x dx. So now using these new variables, u and v, into our formula from up here, we're going to get a new formula that will look a lot cleaner and a lot nicer. It's the integral of u dv 
it's u times v minus the integral of v to u. So usually when you look up integration by parts, this is the formula you would see. All right, so now that we have our formula for integration by parts, let's start with our first example. Let's find the integral of x times sine x dx. Looking at our integration by parts formula, what I need to do is I need to split this integral up into a u and a dv. And the u, we're going to have to take the derivative of it, and the dv, we're going to have to find the antiderivative of it. So I kind of organized this information in this nice chart, u and dv. So the way I'm going to split this up is I'm going to put x in the u spot, and then I'm going to put sine of x dx in the dv spot. And so what you're going to do then is fill out the rest of this little kind of chart here I've got going on. So I'm going to take the derivative of u, which is 1, so I'm just going to write dx, and find the antiderivative of sine x, which is minus cosine x. And then the integration by parts formula tells you you need to grow horizontally across in this table and then diagonally down in the table. So using our integration by parts formula, we now know that the integral of x sine x is going to be Across, you multiply, so minus x cosine x minus the integral. And now go that diagonal down, so you'll have minus cosine x dx. So we have two minuses there, which will cancel to be a positive. And now I just need the antiderivative of cosine, which we know to be sine x plus c. So one thing I want to ask is how did I know that x should go in the u spot and d and sine should go in the dv spot? What happens if we make the opposite choice? So question, what if I had chosen u to be sine x and dv to be x dx. Would that have worked? And so let's see. Let's fill out our table. So here I'm choosing u to be sine. Take the derivative of sine as cosine. Take the integral of x, which is x squared over 2. And then follow again in your chart, horizontally across, diagonally down. So then the integral of x sine x would be multiply across x squared sine x over 2 minus the integral. And then multiply on the diagonal cosine x dx. So I can pull the 2 out of that integral. And I'm left with x squared cosine x dx. 
and compare this integral with the integral you started with. What's changed? Well, my trig function sine, it's now a cosine. Sine is now cosine. And what happened to the polynomial? X became x squared. The degree went up by 1. And so what you're left with is something more complicated. And you could even say more difficult than the original integral. So if I made this opposite choice, integration by parts won't work here. And this is usually the case in general, is that you can't choose u and, and dv in any order. You have to make a specific choice, okay? And usually only one of those will work. All right, let's look at our next example. Let's evaluate the integral of ln of x dx. So again, I need to split this up into a u and a dv. Now for this problem, if I look inside of my integral, I really only have one func one term here, one function, ln of x. So I've only got one object, and it needs to go either in the u or the dv spot. Well, if I put it here, then when I'm filling out my table, I would need to know the antiderivative of ln of x, which is exactly what the problem is asking me to do. So if you only have one term, you're not going to put it in this dv spot. Instead, you're going to put it in the u. And now I'm going to put 1, or just dx here, and I'm going to fill out my table. So the derivative of ln of x, it's 1 over x dx. The integral of 1 is x. And again, I follow across in my table, horizontally across, diagonally down. So the integral of ln of x is multiply across ln of x times x minus the integral of x times 1 over x dx. And what we can do is we can simplify this integral we're left with To just be 1. And what's the integral of 1? It's just x. Look at our next example. Let's find the integral of t squared e to the t dt. So again, I'm going to split this up. I'm using integration by parts here into a u and a dv. Now, e to the t can go in either spot because you're going to take the derivative of it is itself, the antiderivative of it is also itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the polynomial term, the t squared, and put it in the u spot. And you'll see why after we complete this uh, integration by parts here. So let's fill in our table, the derivative of t squared, 2t. The integral of e to the t is e to the t. And again, you go 
horizontally across and diagonally down. So the integral of t squared e to the t will be t squared e to the t minus the integral, go diagonally down, 2t e to the t dt. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that 2 out in front. Now I'm still left with a product, so I can't compute this integral straight away, but what we should do is take a moment and compare what we started with and what we've got now. What's changed? Well, the polynomial went down one degree, t squared down to t. So what we're going to do is if we do integration by parts one more time, this polynomial will go down a degree down to a constant. And I won't have a product anymore. So we're going to do integration by parts again. Here I'm picking, separating this out, u dv. And again, I'll put the polynomial in the u spot. And I fill in my table. The derivative of t is 1. The integral of e to the t is e to the t. Go horizontally across diagonally down, and now we're left with t squared e to the t minus 2, make sure you put parentheses here, go across t e to the t minus the integral of e to the t dt. And just as I said, the product has gone away and I'm just left with the integral of e to the t, which I know how to evaluate that. It's just going to be e to the t. And there's my antiderivative. Alright, let's look at our next example. Let's evaluate the integral of e to the x sine x dx. So we're going to split this up. We have two functions here, e to the x and sine x. I'm going to split this up into a u and a dv. And e to the x can go into any spot. I'm going to put sine of x over here in the u and the e to the x dx in the v spot. The derivative of sine is cosine. The integral of e to the x is e to the x. So again, we go follow your chart horizontally across the top and then diagonally down from there. So we're getting that the integral of e to the x sine x, it's sine x times e to the x minus the integral of e to the x cosine x. So again, I still have a product. So we should take a moment and compare where we started and where we ended. These both have an e to the x in them. The only thing that's changed is sine switched into cosine. So if we do it one more time, the cosine will switch back into the sine. So let's do integration by parts one more time. u dv, and again I'll put e to the x and the dv, and my trig function in my u spot. The derivative of cosine is a minus sine. The integral of e to the x is e to the x. Go horizontally across and diagonally down. 
So for this integral, the integral of e to the x sine x, we're getting sine x e to the x minus multiply, and again parentheses are important here, M multiply across, so that'll be cosine x e to the x minus the integral, and then I'm going to get another minus, so let me go ahead and, well, I'll just leave it as minus sine x dx. And so I'm going to distribute this minus sign right here. So we'll get sine x e to the x minus cosine x e to the x minus the integral of e to the x sine x dx. So now compare. Well, actually, this integral we have, we're left with over here is exactly the same as the one we started with, except it has the opposite sign now. There's a minus here on, in front of the one on the right. So what we're going to do is we're going to treat this like an equation and solve for the integral. So I'm going to erase these lines here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add the integral to both sides of the equation. just like you were solving for x in an equation. And now I have two of them on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, they canceled, so they had opposite signs. And so now if I wanna solve for my integral, all I need to do is divide everything by two So get a 1 half, and you can even factor out an e to the x if you want out of these two, and you get sine of x minus cosine x here. And the only thing you're missing, this is an indefinite integral, so what's the thing, one thing we always have to have is the plus c. And there's my answer. Okay. So in this case, we did integration by parts twice. We ended up back at the integral we started with, but we had an opposite sign, so we treated it like an equation to solve for the integral. All right. So the next thing I'm going to mention is that you can also use integration by parts Or definite integrals. So let me show you an example. Well, here's how it works for the formula. The integral from A to B of a product, well, you get that first term and you plug in A and B into it, minus, and then in your second term in your integration by parts formula, you have an integral, it's just gonna change to a definite integral. So let's, let's look at an example with a, a definite integral. Let's say I want you to calculate the integral from 0 to 1 of arctangent or inverse tangent. So we want to use integration by parts here. I need a u and I need a dv. And if you look, you only have one term here in your integral. 
So that whole thing is going to go in the U spot. Which means 1 dx will go in the dv. The integral of 1 is x. The derivative of arctangent, 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. So now that we've got our table kind of set up here, you go horizontally across, diagonally down. So the integral from 0 to 1 of arctangent, go across x tan inverse of x. Now we, because it's a definite integral, we need to plug in 0 and 1 into it, minus the integral from 0 to 1 of x over 1 plus x squared dx. So let's go ahead and plug in 1 and 0 into our first term here. 1 tan inverse of 1 minus, well, I have x, so this whole second term will be 0. And what's tan inverse of 1? Where is tangent 1? Pi over 4. And then how am I going to compute the second integral? Well, we can just do a u substitution on that second integral. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do that separately. So you want to use substitution. I'm going to let t be 1 plus x squared dt 2x dx. If you solve, you'll get, for x dx, you'll get 1 half dt is x dx. Now, since this is a definite integral and we're changing variables, we've got to change our numbers, our bounds on our integral. So our new values, when x is 0, what value is t? t is 1. When x is 1... What is t? t is going to be 2. So the integral from 0 to 1 <clears throat> you're going to get a 1 half. The integral of 1 over t dt and then our new numbers are 1 to 2. And what's the integral of 1 over t? It's ln of t, the absolute value of t, 1 half ln 2 minus 1 half ln 1. ln of 1 is just 0. So my answer now, remember we had pi over 4 minus this integral, so it'll be pi over 4 minus 1 half ln of 2. This is a definite integral, so you shouldn't have any variables left. You should only have uh, numbers.